In this video, we are going to discuss reasoning about similarity with transformations. We're going to be describing similar triangles. So take a look at this notice and wonder. And you can pause the video and write down some things that you notice and write down some things that you are wondering about. And then you can come back to the video. So some things that you might have noticed and wondered about, depending on if you were thinking about the target for the day about describing similar triangles. Maybe you noticed this little triangle and you noticed a bigger triangle. Maybe that made you, um, so you noticed kind of two triangles. Maybe you wondered, are those two triangles similar? Um, is it a dilation? Maybe you noticed um, 5 up to 15 is multiplying by 3, and you noticed same thing on this side. And then you noticed here that um, 4 times 3 is not 16, so you noticed that this one was times 4. Maybe you wondered why that was. Maybe um, that made you recognize that this 3 and the 5 were from the red triangle. And that actually this whole blue triangle's length is 5 and 15 or 20. And this whole length here is the 3 and the 9, so 12 total. Which then 3 times 4 is 12 and 5 times 20, or sorry, 5 times 4 is 20. And maybe um, you saw these lines here and you either wondered if you, they were parallel or maybe you um, were able to determine that they were parallel. Remembering that um, we have the triangle proportionality theorem that if these sides, these little chunks are proportional, so multiply by three, multiply by three they are, um, then you knew that those lines were parallel. So maybe either you wondered that or you were able to reason that they are. All right, then let's take a look at what we're going to do in this first activity. So in your book, I suggest writing this at the bottom of the page under number two. And so it tells you that you're going to sketch two triangles. I'm going to tell you kind of how to make sure that you get proportional triangles. So I'm going to give you step by step here how to draw those two triangles. So first, okay, so we're drawing triangle ABC and DEF. And we want them to be proportional, not the same size. So I would like for you to draw two segments with different lengths, okay? And if you want, the last thing we're gonna do is label all the side lengths and angle measures. So if you wanted to measure them as you're drawing them, that would make some sense, okay? So we'll label this one. So I drew this one at four centimeters. Um, and then measure this one is about 6.4 centimeters. Let's also label those segments as A, B, and D, E. Then next, what I want you to do, and pause the video at any time if, you, if I'm going too fast for you. So the next thing I want you to do is um, I would like for you to draw two angles that are going to be congruent, okay? So I want you to draw two angles that are going to be congruent, one at A and one at D. So I um, set my protractor down and I measured mine at 40 degrees. So I set my protractor down, went up to 40, drew a dot and then drew that line and then went over to angle D and did the same thing. Okay, so set the protractor on D, put a dot at 40 and drew that angle. So both of my, and you don't have to draw the same angle measures as mine. You can do whatever you want. Just make sure that um, angle A and angle D, whatever you make them are equal to each other. Okay, so I'm gonna put this one as 40. I'm just gonna label it as I'm going. Next, draw congruent angles at B and D. 
So again, you can choose whatever you want. I did 50 degrees. So set my protractor here and then measured that angle at 50, moved my protractor over to E and also measured that angle at 50 degrees. So whatever you decide, just make sure that those two are the same. And then go ahead and measure all the sides. So now you can see you've got, you know, where these cross, that's your last vertex of the triangle. So A, B, C, D, E, F. Um, you could measure that with the protractor. Otherwise, you can subtract these two from 180. So 180 minus 90 gives me 90 here. And so I would just know how big that is by subtracting them from 90 instead of having to actually measure. Um, then go ahead and measure each of your side lengths. So lay your ruler down, go ahead and measure that. So this one is three centimeters. Whoops. Move it over to the next one. This one is um, 4.9 centimeters. Um, 2.5 and then 4. So again, if you need to pause the video, go ahead and finish measuring those. I'm just going to take a screenshot of these. So then uh, make sure you get all three sets of sides and all three angles measured there. I'm just going to delete these out <coughs> and put in our actual triangle, my actual triangles. So now the next thing that you want to do is decide, and this is on the next page in your book. So decide, do these two triangles meet the definition of similar? Okay, and remember that similar um, would mean that there is a set of rigid motions that will move one to the next, okay, including dilation, including a dilation. So will I be able to grab this triangle, move it over, okay, so I can move A onto D because they're the same angle. Then I just need to see if they scale out the same, okay, so I want to see if this side will dilate at the same rate as the other side. Okay, so once I get A over here, okay, so my A prime is gonna land there, will I be able to dilate this side to here at the same rate as I would um, for DE? So we'll just check 4.9 divided by three, and 4.9 divided by three is, uh, is about, um, 1.63. So then we'll take a look at now A prime is over here. Will A, B, okay, when I stretch out this side over to here, is that stretched out at the same rate as this one? Okay, so 6.4 divided by 4 would tell me what scale I need. So 6.4 divided by 4 is about 1.6. So these are essentially equal to each other. So when I stretch this side out, okay, C prime will land on F um, is what we found out there. And when I stretch out B at the same rate as this one, then B prime landed on here. So that does appear um, that they are similar. So now um, if you're doing this video at home, then you can just sketch out your own or you can write out a dilation, or sorry, a set of transformations for your own triangle since you want to have a partners to work with. Um, but I kind of talked about that. So translate so I can get this one onto this one. So translate triangle ABC by directed segment AD. And then mine, my bottom lines were parallel here. So I didn't really have to rotate, but I'm going to put rotate um, Figure eight, rotate triangle ABC if necessary. 
Ah. Until B coincides with E, just in case they weren't parallel, if this one had been kind of rotated a little bit. Um, so now we've got B kind of on line, on ray DE now. All right, so translate ABC by directed segment AD. That got A to land on D, then rotate the triangle until B lands on, oops, sorry, doesn't coincide with E. Okay, but until B lands on segment DE, because B isn't the same size yet. Okay, so AB isn't the same size as DE yet. So it's just going to be rotating and landing on this ray. Okay, you could call it segment DE or ray DE. Then scale uh, or then dilate triangle ABC with center A and scale factor 1.6. So that's what we found up here. This will cause C to land or C prime to land on F and B prime to land on E. Now you could have done this a different way too. You could have started by um, dilating if you wanted to. Okay, so if you wanted to dilate the triangle first, so dilate ABC with A as the center and scale factor of 1.6. This will make it the same size as DEF. Then translate, you can call it A prime, B prime, C prime, the dilated one, um, by directed segment A prime D, rotate um, A prime, B prime, C prime if necessary. Until and now this time, since since our new dilated triangle is the same size, now we could just rotate it until B prime coincides with E. Or you could have picked C prime coincides with F, but since they were the same shape, it's not just going to land on the segment. So those are kind of two different options for transformations there. All right, then um, triangle similarity can go on your reference chart. couple things to notice here um, is the similarity statement down here. Okay, making sure you remember that that little squiggly means similar. So not congruent in size, but similar that there is a scale that will take all the sides to the other one. So if we take all of the side lengths in this little or triangle times K, it's going to give us these lengths here. So we've got congruent angles. And then similar or uh, corresponding sides are proportional. So when we take a look here, if you wanted to mark up the triangle so that you could kind of see corresponding sides, one way to do that. So DE, so here's DE, is putting a dot. And then BE is the one that that's similar to. Because dots don't mean anything. So that'll just help us look at the picture and see them right away. EA, so EA is this side. So those last two letters go with EC. And then first and last DA goes with first and last BC. But that just kind of helps you while you're looking at it, kind of identify them quicker. You could certainly also use color to do that as well. So if you wanted to do segments on there in specific colors, so you could say this one goes with this one. You could do um, EC with EA, and then you could do DA with CB. So kind of whatever you prefer there, whatever's easier kind of for you to look at. All right, then the lesson summary, um, if one figure is similar to another, that means there's a sequence of rigid motions and dilations that takes one exactly over the second. Okay, so we've got congruent angles and side lengths in the same proportion. So those are the two things that make um, figures similar. They have to have congruent angles and their sides have to be in proportion. 
Then we have what's called the converse of a statement, and it's just the statement backwards. So previously we were given similar figures. We knew these two facts about them, okay? And so we went similar gives us congruent angles and then um, proportional sides. So now what we're going to be seeing is when we have these two characteristics, okay, so we see congruent angles and we see proportional sides, that's going to mean that the figures are similar. So we're going to be looking for these characteristics that makes them similar. We also know if they're similar, they have those characteristics. Um, all right, and then you saw in there how we looked for scale factor by comparing two corresponding sides. So we said we knew um, EFI was dilated using center E, okay? And then, um, so the scale factor, we would just compare two corresponding side lengths. So we just divided BC and EF. So always take the image divided by the original. So I'm just going to color those ones too. So take the image divided by the original. That'll give us our scale to dilate. And then... Um, that means, you know, if they're similar, that they're that they can be lined up exactly after a dilation and then doing translation, rotation, reflection.